My name is Michelle Dyer, and I just have to note, I am not a financial advisor. Please consult one. And the views expressed here are strictly my own and do not reflect my employer. Financial basics. Here are some concepts that I want to go over. Bank versus credit union. Now, most of us bank at a bank, but did you know that there are things called credit unions? Now, you might have heard, oh, you need to be a member of a credit union to join. Credit unions have these things called charters. You just have to be within one of the charters. And you live in the United States, so you're definitely in a credit union charter. So just Google around and try to find a credit union near you that you can bank with. Credit unions usually have better rates than banks because banks are publicly, most banks are publicly owned, like Bank of America. They have shareholders, so when they make a profit, they deliver that profit to the shareholders. They are beholden to their shareholders every quarter. Credit unions, on the other hand, are actually owned by the members. So each member opens a share account, and then all the money that the credit union members put in together is used to loan out to other credit union members. They're actually owned by the members, and their whole job is to do right by their members. Banks have to pay taxes, and credit unions do not, so that is actually another advantage that credit unions have. Not only are they for the members, owned by the members, they do not pay taxes, so usually check the rates, but usually they can provide better rates, and um, they definitely try to provide better services than banks. Go check out a credit union if you are not already a member. Checking accounts. These are probably what you already have, a checking account. So first thing that you open. When you open a checking account, you can get direct deposit into your checking account from your paychecks. You know that, that you'll probably get physical checks. There is a checking account number and a routing number on the bottom of your check. And you use those numbers to set up things in online banking, but they are physically on the bottom of your check as well, if you did not know that a debit card. You will probably get a debit card when you open up your checking account. It will have either a Visa or a MasterCard symbol on it. You can use that debit card at a point of sale for a transaction. So you go to buy a pizza and you give them your debit card. When you use your debit card for a purchase, say that pizza is 18 bucks, the pizzeria swipes your debit card and that $18 is automatically withdrawn out of your checking account. Now with a credit card, that's a different story. It's not automatically withdrawn, but with a debit card, it is automatically withdrawn out of your checking account. If you do not have $18 in your checking account, if you only have $15 in your checking account, you will get an overdraft fee, which means you spent more than you've had in your account. And banks, credit unions, everybody will charge you overdraft fees. There is something called overdraft protection that you can sign up for. Check with your institution on how that works. But just know that when you use your debit card, make sure that you have enough money in that checking account, the account that that debit card is linked to, before you spend that money. Or you will get an overdraft fee. And most debit cards at institutions you will use in your ATM as well. Try to use an in-network ATM. If you go to an ATM that is not within your bank or credit union's network, you will probably get charged ATM fees. Those can be anywhere from two to four, probably five, six dollars, depending on where you go, because you can get charged by your financial institution and the ATM can charge you money as well. So definitely check on ATM fees if you're going out of your network. Um, an easy thing to do if there's not an ATM in the area, if you go to CVS and that CVS doesn't have an ATM or it's not in your network, you can get cash back sometimes from CVS. If you make a $20 purchase, sometimes you can get $40 back. But that, again, will come directly out of your checking account. So make sure you have enough money in there to cover that transaction. Savings accounts. People probably open savings accounts for lots of different reasons. Currently in the rate environment we are right now, savings accounts do not have a good rate of return. But a savings account, if, if you have $100 in the account and the savings account rate is 2%, at the end of the year, you will have $102 in your savings account. So the rate is usually a yearly rate on that savings account. You will make 2% on that account. 
by the end of the year. So you put $100 in a savings account with a 2% rate. At the end of the year, you will have $102 in your account. A credit card, which we probably all have. So credit cards with the debit card, you buy that $18 pizza and $18 is immediately taken out of your checking account. A credit card, you buy an $18 pizza and the credit card company puts that on your tab, basically. And then at the end of the month, with those 30 days or however the credit card long that period time period is, they will send you a bill and say, hey, you owe us $18. Please pay by the 15th of next month. Now, if you don't pay the full $18 by the end of that month, they will charge you interest. Say, hey, the credit card company is like, hey, we put out the $18 for you and we give you extra time to pay, you didn't have to pay it that day. You had to pay it when the bill came, when the credit card bill came. So you owe us those $18. If you don't have $18 then, if you can't pay your credit card bill in full, we will charge you interest on the money you cannot pay until the next bill. And we will keep that money that you owe and the interest and put it on the next billing cycle. Credit card debt is very easy to get into. Because you're just going and swiping that card. It's not coming directly out of your checking account. So eh, you don't need to pay attention. Yeah, just swipe my card. So be very, very aware of credit card debt. And then the interest on that debt as well. The initial transactions are pricey, yes. But then the interest on those transactions can build up big time too. And the interest rates on credit cards can be pretty high. You see low introductory offers, but all those introductory offers have little catches like first 18 months for a balance transfer or 2% for the first four months, whatever. They're all eye-catching to get you to, to use their credit card. So just be very, very aware of credit card charges and make sure you pay it in full every single month. If you can't, then we need to talk about why and why you're charging more than you can pay off. Paying your credit card bill on time or making at least the minimum balance due every month is very, very important to your credit score. And we will talk about that later. My trick, what I do, I have a lot of thing on automatic, a lot of things on automatic payment, but I don't know that I'm going to have my full credit card balance due in my checking account every time my credit card bill comes up due. So say I spent like $1,000 on my credit card and I don't know if I have $1,000 on my checking account available. So I won't make an automatic payment for the full amount due. I will see what that minimum balance due is, what the average is for the past 12 months. So say my minimum balance due was 30 bucks for the past 12 months. So I will go in and I will up that a little, I'll make it 50 and I will put an automatic payment every time my credit card bill is due for $50 and pull that out of my checking account because I know I have at least $50 in my checking account at all time. And I want to make sure I am not late on a credit card payment because that will affect my credit score big time. So I will go ahead and put the minimum amount due a little bit more than that as an automatic payment. Yeah, I go in and I check to see when my credit card bill is due and I will pay it in full But what if I'm on the road or what if I'm on vacation or my grandma just passed away a few months ago and what if I was flying to go see her and to go to the funeral and I forgot to to log in to pay my credit card bill? I at least know that I had that minimum amount due paid and I at least made a payment, the minimum payment, so that would not put a ding on my credit score. Store cards. I know every time you go to a store... If you get a New York and Company store card, uh, you'll get an extra 10% off today. It's very attractive when you purchase, but it's very easy to forget about those store cards. Only get the store cards like Amazon and Whole Foods have a store card right now that has really good deal. Run the numbers. If you use enough where the 5% cash back is going to be worth it or whatever the amount is, Go ahead and get that store card, but maybe just limit it to like one or two and you really, really, really use the benefits. And now we have, they call it the digital wallet right now. Any payment that is not cash 
or a card. So Venmo, Apple Pay, PayPal, and this is what we call the digital wallet. So these are our financial basics.